If you're getting older or have a loved one who's getting older, you may be thinking, how am I going to afford assisted living or care for them or for myself? In the United States right now, there are 76 million baby boomers. The number one dilemma for these baby boomers, housing. That dilemma can be your opportunity. Welcome to the Assisted Living Network podcast, where you can discover how just one residential assisted living home could secure your financial future forever. Hey, it's Isabel from the Assisted Living Network. How the heck are you gonna afford assisted living care if and when you need it? If you're getting older or have a loved one who's getting older, you may be thinking, how am I going to afford assisted living or care for them or for myself? Well, there are many ways to pay for care, and they include, but are not limited to, Medicare, Medicaid, VA benefits, long-term care insurance, using your cash, savings, IRAs, investments, or some properties that you own, or maybe using a waiver program. When it comes to Medicare or Medicaid, they'll pay out about $1,800 a month. It really doesn't cover much, and the quality shows. You're not getting the red carpet treatment in a home that accepts government funding, so I'm not going to count on them taking care of you very well anytime soon. Now, if you or a loved one have served even one day in active duty, first, thank you for your service. Next, you may qualify for some VA benefits. They may cover some or all of the cost that you need to pay for your care towards the end of life. This is something you can apply for, and it's called aid and attendance. It probably won't cover all of your care needs, but it will definitely help. And it's a huge benefit for those of you who have served during a time of war. Companies like Patriot Angels can help you fill out your paperwork since it has to be perfect. This next one, long-term care insurance. Only 10% of the population has this, but if you do, it's amazing and it will cover a lot. More than likely, all you need and more. They will likely be charging the maximum billable amount when you go into an assisted living home or facility, but this is money that if you don't use it, you lose it. Most seniors are actually going to be using their cash, their savings, maybe investments, their IRAs, or selling physical properties that they own to pay for their care needs towards the end of life. These are the most common forms of payment and what most seniors are planning on using towards the end of life. So all that money that people talk about is going to be transferred from one generation to the next. The greatest transfer of wealth that we all hear about, well, I think they're forgetting one stop in between, assisted living. So it's probably not going to go from the baby boomers to Gen X or millennials. It's probably going to go to assisted living and whatever's left will get left to the children. But this is something to really be aware of because if you or your loved ones don't have a lot set aside or you don't have a property that you purchased a long time ago and now it's worth a whole lot more, like many baby boomers do, this is something that you really need to start preparing for. Now, I know a lot of my seniors, they are relying on one thing and one thing only, their adult children. They use the phrase, you know, I took care of you, it's your turn to take care of me. And many adult children will pull together to help mom or dad during this time. And if the senior doesn't have a lot of income left, this may be the option that they're planning on using. So if you are that daughter Judy or that son Bob who has a loved one who's going to need this and you don't think they have much in savings left or they don't have a property that they can sell and use that capital, you need to get prepared because the silver tsunami is coming and we cannot stop it. And if your loved one needs this, they need it and they need it now. It's not something that you, you know, think about and consider and say, hey, in six months, I think mom's going to need to go into a home. It's something that really happens often overnight. With a click of a finger, all of a sudden you have to be finding out who's going to quit their job and take care of mom or dad full time. Are you going to pay for in-home care, which can be insanely expensive, or are you going to put them into a home, a facility? 
these are your options towards the end of life. And this is really something that many families need to be considering with the growing silver tsunami. We talk about this at the Residential Assisted Living Academy all the time because I find that many daughter Judy's son Bob's, they're not prepared. And oftentimes they end up taking a lot of the burden on themselves. They say, mom or dad, come move in with me. I'll take care of you while I'm not at work. And maybe they get a caregiver to come in during the day while they are at work. And that still is going to cost them about four or $5,000 a month. And now they just said goodbye to going to Johnny's soccer game or Sarah's ballet practice, book club, wine club, church, you name it. Say goodbye because when a loved one needs care, they need it and they need it now. This isn't like, hey, mom, jump in the car. We're going to the baseball game. It's painful for them to get out of bed. They need help getting up, bathing, eating, dressing. You know, most seniors move into assisted living when they need help with three to six ADLs, activities of daily living. They're not moving in for funsies, okay? So we need to really start being prepared. Look at your family. Look at what is going on and consider, you know, we're all aging and we can't stop it. Look at your own life. Are you going to be needing this? And are you looking at your kids saying, yikes, none of them are going to be able to afford the care home that I want, that I need. Well, maybe it's your time to start your own residential assisted living home. Maybe it's time for you to change the trajectory of your family, of your care. There's no time better than right now. I want to say this though. In some states like California, they've added an amazing program, ALWP, the Assisted Living Waiver Program. You can get up to $20,000 per resident. This is a great program to take advantage of. And there are experts who can help you like Deb Burton from Alliance Senior Consulting. She is a pro on the Assisted Living Waiver Program. It is a long-term care option for Medi-Cal recipients that offers alternatives to nursing facility placements. The program is a combination federal and state-funded program that allows eligible individuals to reside in and receive services services from a California licensed RCFE or residential care facility for the elderly. The goal of the waiver program is to enable low income Medi-Cal eligible seniors and persons with disabilities who would otherwise be required to be in skilled nursing facilities or SNFs and they would have to remain in those homes. So this gives them an option to relocate to a community setting or an RCFE. Now, this program is in partnership with California State Department of Health Care and Services, or DHCS, and it's funded by Medi-Cal funds. Residents, they pay monthly for room and board for their income to reside in an assisted living facility participating in the program. So many states may start to adopt a program just like California as they've adopted this waiver program, and that'll be cool to see, but... I'm not sure how soon we're going to see that be adopted in all 50 states. For now, you've got to make a plan. And again, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. If you want to learn more about how to start your own residential assisted living home, check us out at ralacademy.com. Don't forget to like and share this episode and follow us wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Thanks for listening to the Assisted Living Network.